game. Don't need the damn demo video. Welcome to Devil May Cry 3. The best Devil May Cry. I will, I will fight people over that. Um, so yeah, in this game, you actually, uh, with the special edition, they made it so you can play as Dante's brother, who plays a you know, pretty goddamn important role in this game. We don't need that. Um, what is the difference between gold and yellow? I forgot. I don't think it's too big of a deal, but... Alright, so yeah, this is, this is just how it deals with like yellow orbs and stuff. Um, so like if you do gold, it'll revive you like right away. Um, yellow does sort of the thing that like Devil May Cry 1 did a little bit more where it's like it's more checkpoints. Um, I don't intend to die that much because god damn it, that would be embarrassing. Let's watch this cutscene. You've heard of it, haven't you? The legend of Sparta? When I was young, my father would tell me stories about it. Long ago, in ancient times, a demon rebelled against his own kind for the sake of the human race. With his sword, he shut the portal to the demonic realm and sealed the evil entities off from our human world. But since he was a demon himself, his power was also trapped on the other side. I never believed it. I thought it was just a child's fairy tale. But I discovered that this so-called legend wasn't a myth at all. Sparta existed. How do I know? Well, I met the sons of Sparta. Both of them. Though the same blood of their father flowed through their veins, the two battled each other fiercely like arch enemies. It seemed as if they derived some sort of twisted pleasure from this brotherly fighting. Sorry, not open for business yet. <laughs> I haven't even picked a name for this joint, and I'm already getting calls. You a customer too? <laughs> well, if you want to use the bathroom, help yourself. The toilet's in the back. Is your name Dante, son of Sparta? Where did you hear that? From your brother. He sent this invitation for you. Please, accept it. Invitation, huh?
party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Alright, so that's one of the best video game intros, in my opinion, ever. So... Like, it's so crazy to me that this game came after Devil May Cry 2, where, like, Dante was... the worst. Oh, shit. I'm already playing bad. Or, like, Dante's the worst, and then, like, they make him just the fucking best in this game. It is kind of rough going from this game to like... Do a cool thing. There we go. Like going from this game after... Devil May Cry 2, which plays so stiff and it's so overly animated, like something like this that's like really snappy and but here is where they really kind of embrace like the combo system. Oh, I should have changed my style. Don't know why I didn't do that. So yeah, in this game they introduced the style system. Uh, right now I'm just on the uh, sort of agility based one, but they have ones that focus on your melee weapons, focus on your firearms, and then there's a uh, one called the Royal Guard, which is, it's actually really fucking cool if you, if you put the time into like learning timings and stuff, it's really defense based, but it can like, it can bring your combos up to like super stylish and you know, no fucking time at all, you know what you're doing. I, I need steam because I'm getting fucked up here. Oh, jeez. Damn, I'm just not going to. This is really just to kind of get used to the game. I can already tell. Looks like this is gonna be one hell of a party! The real tragedy in all Devil May Cry games is how many pieces of pizza Dante has lost to the various demons he's dealt with.
Alright, I need to switch my style over. So, yeah, you got Trickster, which is more, you know, kind of dodging, the stuff like that. You, you can do some pretty cool stuff with it, too, but, uh... My kind of go-to has always been Swordmaster. I, it just adds a little more depth to your combos, and it's a pretty straightforward way to, uh, to keep those going. And so, like, in this game, like, you can actually have multiple weapons equipped that you can switch on the fly, but you have to, like, decide that between missions, like, what your loadout's gonna be. Um, I believe. I, I, maybe you can change it in the middle of the missions. I, I usually don't need to. I usually know what my loadout's going to be, but... So yeah, when this game came out originally, well, shit, Dante's not done here. Damn it! You guys totally wrecked my shop, and I haven't even named it yet. You're gonna pay for that. <laughs> So yeah, when this game first came out, it, it was, I mean, it's still considered pretty hard by a lot of people, um, but I believe when they released the special edition, they made the normal difficulty mode a little easier, um, and that's the mode we're on right now. I didn't have that much trouble with the game, honestly, like, it, it was hard, for sure, but most action games kind of have to be. Yeah, by using the sword master style, um, it lets me do like that spin attack, and then I can do an air slash combo thing here. And, and as you get more weapons and stuff, like that ability stands. Like it, it, it adds things to those weapons as well. And that's pretty cool. This game is just really fun. Uh, like, the tone is right, the game, the combat is finally where it needed to be. Um, like, eventually at the end, the story starts you know, taking itself a, probably a little too seriously, but it's in that, like, anime way that kind of works. It's like if they did everything tongue-in-cheek, tongue in you just basically made Bayonetta. And I do like Bayonetta, but there is something I like about like the earnest nature of Devil May Cry that Bayonetta doesn't really have. What the fuck? The thing that makes the game harder is not having Stinger right away. Probably why a lot of people were put off by this game's difficulty. Jesus.
It's been nearly a year since we last met. Where does the time go? No doubt, you've got some fun planned for me. Right, Virgil? I am playing like a bitch. It gets easier to like, uh, once you beat the game a couple times, you can go back to missions and retry them. So if you're really concerned about your rank, you can. I come well. Doesn't it excite you? The Timon the Gru has revived. The Great One, who once ruled this earth as the medium between the human world and the demon world. Isn't it a magnificent view? greatest minds of their time, those who revered evil, constructed this glorious edifice. Now, after two millenniums of confinement, it can at last fulfill the purpose for which it was intended. That's none of my concern. Did he have it? Of course. He's taking good care of it. After all, it is the only memento left from the mother you both lost. But he has no idea of its true power. Virgil does some cool shit in this game. Uh, it's kind of why, like, even as a character, he's like, he's a villain in this, and then he's just like, you know, found it. like, he's an optional character in four, but he doesn't really. He's an optional character in this, but they don't really give him much of a campaign. But people fucking love Virgil, man, and they should. He's, he's a goddamn badass. Cool thing in those cutscenes is like they always like find a way to show the number for the next mission you're going to. Okay, so I should have bought this last time. Actually head back here in the game. Thank you for it, because there's plenty of monsters here, which means there's plenty of orbs. Nothing makes me happier than the fact that that's like an actual move you can do in the game. Like jumping on these guys and shooting shit up with them. Because it would have been really easy for them to just be like... I thought there were some barrels you could smash back here, but maybe I was wrong. 
It's a little hard to tell in this game. But like, the fact that wasn't just a cutscene thing Dante did, and it's like, no, you can jump on the enemy and fucking surf them. Like, that's, uh... It's pretty awesome. I'm not planning on like any sort of complex 100% run. I'm probably not going to show off much of like or any really of like Virgil's stuff. Uh, I'll probably show off Virgil more when we get to Devil May Cry 4 because they let him do a lot more. Um, but like I said, they don't really give him much of a campaign. They kind of like they they give him like one cutscene in this, and then like two and four, but then it's just, you know, it's the rest of the game. Uh, but he is fun to play as. Uh, in Devil May Cry 4, I, I like him more than I like Dante or Nero, for sure. Um, So yeah, you can hit the triggers in real time and uh, switch to whatever gun you want. No more menu bullshit. Those lights are uh, fucked up. The effect they are having on my screen is not good. God damn it. If I finally get it to S and they hit me. Oh, fuck. Fuck. You get pretty obsessed with wanting to get that combo up. It's just a like inherently satisfying gameplay system that like they really embraced in this game that 
Like before, it was just kind of like, ah, eh, they're ranking something, but who cares? But here, it feels like you have a lot more options, so it's a lot. It's a lot more fun to experiment to see, like, well, what's an effective way to get up to stylish? And the game rewards you for it, it's part of your grade, so. Which, I mean, was true in the last uh, two games, I guess, but. So these things uh, have blue orb uh, shards in them. They're colored a certain way, they depend on the weapon you have. Um, if it's red, it's Rebellion. So you can get the thing in this now. And it's all about getting your combo up. So just a another way they want you to experiment, try different moves. Um, that does mean I, that is part of the reason why I don't really use other styles other than a uh, swordmaster though because the only way you can keep your combo up with those things is with the weapon you're using like you can't shoot them to keep the combo extended so like swordmaster just gives you those like extra moves that gives you the variety you need up a level here because because it was important in the last you know I mean it was definitely important too because guns were the only thing that worked in that game uh, but in one you, shooting things a lot wasn't as quite as important as it will be here but it's like if you're not swinging your sword or you know what have you you should be shooting shit um, my health a little bit here too. So when you don't have your double jump here, uh, staying in the air for that little ground ice attack is a little trickier. Um, but if you just fire your guns and do the air combo with Swordmaster style, you can kind of you can hold out on not having to buy a double jump right away. What's kind of fucked up is that in this game you have to buy it for pretty much every melee weapon, and that's frustrating. Oh, 
fuck that. Come on, dude. This guy always gives me a little bit of trouble whenever I start a new game. It's it's that thing where it's just like, oh, fuck, fucking fuck. It's that thing where like I'm used to this game when I have like all my abilities available, and, and a lot of the fun of this game is going back and kind of new game plusing it a little bit. And, I'm not even sure myself. Regardless, you have proved your strength. I acknowledge your ability. Take my soul and go forth. You have my blessing.
Looks like we have an uninvited guest. Is that so? A human. A woman. I'm afraid I should ask the uninvited one to leave. If that is what you want. Actually, I happen to be acquainted with that woman. A storm is approaching. I got Virgil's just like, you're fucking weird, dude. Shut up. What do we need? So we got Cerberus, uh, Frozen Ninja. They're they're pretty cool. Uh, I don't use them that much, honestly. But in this game, you you kind of use whatever you have loaded out to you. It's like once you start finding weapons you kind of like, you tend to stick with them a little bit, maybe a little too much. Because a lot of this fun, the fun in this game is just trying shit out. So your styles actually level up. I don't know if it means they do more damage or what, but they just level up the more you use them. So the game, like, it's weird. Like the game gives you these options for styles, but it kind of encourages you to stick with one and keep leveling it up all the way. Um. I mean, I'm fine with. Maybe I, I might need to buy a healing thing because I suck. Just buy one of those and hope I don't need it. Because one of the fucked up things about this game is actually you don't get Devil Trigger until like mission eight. I want to say. Uh, so you actually don't have that reliable way to just like start healing yourself. Might be one of the few knocks I have against the game, but it's that thing like I talked about. Like a lot of the fun of this game is like going through it multiple times. Uh, after you've done it once, you have everything. You, you will be surprised how easy a lot of the fights are when you have everything, even on higher difficulties, and then you'll be surprised also at how hard a lot of the fights are, even when you have everything on higher difficulties. Right. Oh, damn it. We'll use the nunchucks for a while, just because they're fun. But yeah, this game has uh, secret missions and stuff in it too, and I don't really... I don't know where they all are, and I don't typically care, usually. Like, I've never really played this game and been like, oh no, I don't have enough health. Um, I, I'm sure I've done them all at some point, but like... I, I, I will totally admit I'm not that great at Devil May Cry for as much as I love it. So, some of those challenges are just ridiculous. Like, I have ones where it's like, stay in the air for like, 30 seconds. And it's like, that is very hard to do. But come on, dude. Fuck! Like, just keep interrupting my combos. Fuck off. Piece of shit. Hey, where were we? You assholes. Oh, 
Jesus Christ. Like, Cerberus is a... It's a cool weapon if you kind of invest in it. Like, it's other moves that you have to buy are pretty good. But, uh... Like... But, like, it's default stuff is... It's a little slow. It's, um... It's very picky. Like, it's not like your sword that like, gets in this wide arc. More switches, more elevators, all that good Devil May Cry shit. I think one of my favorite things about this game is how the enemies kind of strike a good balance between like just being combo fodder like your attacks feel strong against them and like they encourage the experimentation and stuff I was talking about with the combo system but uh like they bring unique challenges also so you have to pay attention to like what you're fighting where things are gonna teleport what the fuck you assholes Come on, dude, you didn't hit him once. I'm gonna fucking die. So there is a thing up there, but you have to do some awkward platforming to get up to it. So yeah, I tend to play this game a little reckless, and that's why not getting Devil Trigger all that early kind of fucks me up is because double trigger is like my go-to you know I, oh shit I need health just hit it because you get it back so fast a little carefully here. Which means no dicking around with nunchucks when a sword will do. I 
do love that those things blow up the enemies. Just good times, eh? So this boss is, uh... It's pretty stupid, honestly. Um, it's a lot of this shit, like, just hopping on it, hitting it a few times. You can get its head like, here. You'll do a lot more damage. We'll um, fire those projectiles, and then you like you have to take cover, which is weird. Tail will also do more damage. If you just hit it in the body, you're not gonna get as much. You can kind of like abuse the lock on to see what tunnel he's coming out of, which is good, I guess. But They're actually giving us a pretty generous pattern so far. That's about as easy as that fight's ever gone for me. Um, usually he'll do some like tunnel pattern that's just a giant pain in the ass, so. That's pretty cool. Like, he's never really that hard. He just it takes a long time because he'll just, like, decide I'm, I'm going to just loop through, through tunnels that you can't really hit him at. something to it first. Do you know what that is, kid? Or is that too difficult for you? 
Get to the point, or you want to keep on dancing? Actually, I prefer a sword to be my partner. May I have this dance, my lady? Bingo! That is what the something is. Remember that, kid? Write it down on your hand if you don't trust your head. <laughs> I see. Thanks. <laughs> you still piss me off, though. And so, yeah, that was Jester. Um, his thing is that he will pop up and annoy the fuck out of Dante for. A little bit. Air hike was not that important in Devil May Cry 1. I was kind of surprised that how I didn't feel like I needed it at all in that playthrough. Air hike is super useful in this game, and this upcoming uh, boss on this mission. It just helps to get extra elevation. It'll help you dodge stuff. But before we get to that... Destroying the luck for me, devil boy! And welcome to hell! Please accept my gift. Don't be humble. Just take it. After all, we're bunnies, aren't we? <laughs> So these things, you gotta shoot them to turn them into statues first, and then you can kill them. If you just start cutting them up, they can multiply. They can multiply anyway, but... So this is something they added to the special edition. Every time Jester shows up in a cutscene or something in this game, you are going to have to do one of these boss fights. Welcome to hell. They're not that hard, but they're kind of they're kind of dumb. I know you could hit him in that. So it just reuses audio clips from the game, like in the cutscenes he says all these lines and they just add him, like, they just plugged him into this boss fight. Which I mean, I'm not surprised they didn't, you know, go all out for this, but like... Oh shit. Break down! 
I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him. Like, it adds more to the game, I guess, and it is fun to just pummel him for a while, but after, like, the first one, I'm kind of, like, over it, and the fact that it's, like, a reoccurring thing. Like, he does different attacks, but it's still kind of the same setup. Like, dodge his attacks, and then, uh, tire him out, and then just wail on him for a while. Again, it's one of those things that gets easier, like, with Devil Trigger and stuff, because then you can kind of... Like, you can keep that loaded up for any boss fights. This game does do the same, like, fixed camera angle shit that, you know, was driving me nuts in Devil May Cry 1 and 2, um... I don't really know what to say, like, why it doesn't bother me as much here, like... I, I think they're not as, like... They're not as sharp, like, camera adjustments, like, the game kind of keeps your momentum going a little bit, but... Um, it, it's still... A pain in the ass, for sure. Uh, I think I think it just boils down to this game's fun and like Devil May Cry 2 wasn't, and and Devil May Cry 1 is not as fun, so it's a little more noticeable. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating in this game having to get air hike for every weapon you get, so it's like... And it's not available for some of them. Uh, like Cerberus, I don't think there's an air hike to it. Uh, and there, there's a couple more I know don't have it. Uh, they, they have other options for like more elevation and shit, but... I think they fixed that in Devil May Cry 4, and your head is just a thing. So you, you still have to buy it, but it's a, it's not tied into your weapons anymore. God damn it, dude! Fucking bastard! God damn it, fuck that. Like, fucking fucker just exists to interrupt combos. Piece of shit. need anything from here. Just making sure I didn't 
I missed something. So this early part of the game is the only place I really can remember that I get kind of like turned around. Uh, it's not that complicated, but it, it can be if like you... Alright, this might actually be kind of tricky. I don't even know if I can get my combo up high enough with this. wasn't hard at all. So that school thing there is the secret mission. Uh, I'm really bad at it. Um, like, you have to ride this elevator, but you have to knock all the enemies off, otherwise it collapses it, and it's, uh, it's tough. I have a lot of problems with it, especially, like, trying to do it straight out of a new game. Like, it's still the mechanic here, but, like, Here, the enemies aren't double-triggered. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Just as I was saying, it's not that hard. Fuck. Piece of shit. That was my fault for just getting hit by their stupid shit. But yeah, uh, in not really so much in this game. I think there's one part or in this difficulty that we have to kind of look out for. But uh, but in the higher difficulties, for sure, enemies can double trigger too, and that makes them stronger. All right, so yeah, you, you, answering my questions for me. You get new moves and stuff when you level up styles, and that's pretty cool. Speedruns of this game are fucking nuts, because they... It's just, like, people doing stingers the entire level, and... Like, as much as I like this game and I like playing it, I imagine, like, hearing the stinger... Yeah! Every fucking two seconds is just the worst. 
So this boss is actually, uh... It probably gave me the most trouble of anything in this game when I first played it. Now I love it. Now I think it's a really fun fight. Um, and it's not too hard either. Once you know what they do and how to dodge it. You're right. We have to be gracious hosts. What should we do? How do I know? We need to come up with something. <laughs> Brother, our guest is Sai. Sai? What is Sai? Well, a Sai is when... Enough already! How long are you two gonna keep carrying on like this? In case you didn't get the hint, I'll spell it out. Your guest wants to go through. Got it? Our job here is to go on this pool. That's right, we can't let you pass. Alright, so there is kind of a trick to this fight. Um, you can make him hit each other, and that does a lot of damage to him. It might even stun him. But the other thing you kind of have to do is to watch their uh, life bars. And don't take out just one of them. Because uh, they kind of do an Ornstein and Smo thing where... When one of them dies, the other one will pick up the other's sword. If you actually manage their health meters right, like it's not an automatic thing. If you manage their health lead meters right, you can kill them before they have a chance to pick up their other sword. Hike's really handy on that attack because it's just you, you'll be above them whenever they try to hit you. They're not hitting each other as much as they kind of want to do right now. Oh, impatient.
long time. Yes, a very long time. For someone stronger than us. Someone who can control us. My name is Agni, and my name is Rudra. You shall take us with you. We can be a great help to you. Okay, but on one condition. What is it? Name it! No talking. Fair enough. As you wish. No talking. Good. So here we have a. Uh, well, we'll have to switch to it, but. Uh, but yeah, we got Agni and Rudra. They're pretty great. Um, they're fun to play with, and they're, I like I like the idea that Dante just like took these two demonic swords, and he just has them forever, and they're not allowed to talk ever. But they're cool with that because all they ever wanted was to be in the hands of somebody stronger than them. So lady does some cool shit. Uh, I don't know. She also kind of falls in the rut, though, of like, that, like, oh, I hate demons, but I guess you're okay. Like, character that, like, the Devil May Cry was kind of bound to have at some point. But, alright. So what do we got for them? So yeah, like, for, we'd have to buy our double jump again to get the most out of that. Um, honestly, I really just want to get Stinger level 2 because that'll give us a lot more distance. We're going to do that just to get it out of the way. Uh, I think. And then... Well, there's not really much else I can do when we get a healing thing, but we already have one. Oh, but yeah, I do need to go in and actually equip Agni and Rudra. So these are a pretty damn fun weapon, for sure.
the crawling infant to the man standing tall and finally to the old man leaning on his cane. So you notice the doors have different numbers of lights. Crawling infant, four. Man standing, two. And old man on his cane, three. Puzzles are tough. So you actually, to progress, you only need to do two of these. Um, they're different challenges. One's like that knowledge thing, which isn't that hard. And then it's like a combat one. And then there's kind of a, this one, they call it trial of skill. Um, just dodge the specs. Which is kind of hard, but it's not the worst thing in the world either. What makes it kind of hard is, like, this shit. Uh, shit, I'm, I'm not on my... God damn it, I'm not on Switch to fucking Rebellion. God damn it, yeah, it, that will make it hard if it does back-to-back -back ones you have to jump over. That one always fucks me up a little bit. Right. Yeah, I start having fun. God, I want my double jump. Hi, dude. I, what's not helping is I'm walking on to everything but the fucking dumb gargoyle birds. The problem, like, with making double jump a, like, weapon-based thing is, like, it's a pain in the ass to, like, have to switch weapons to have that ability, but it's not really worth it to, like, save up another 20,000 to get it for everything. Like, there's one other weapon I might buy it for in this playthrough. But most of the time, you know, I just kind of get it for Rebellion and always keep Rebellion in there. Alright, so, this is where they're devil triggered. Um, fucking fuckers. Stop doing your attack. And to get them undevil triggered, you have to get both of these things activated. Pain in the ass. So a devil triggered enemy, what makes them kind of tricky is they don't respond to like getting hit. You know, they don't get knocked back. They're not as much combo fodder. Luckily, bombs still work.
Well, you can damage them, uh, it's just they're not doing a lot, so it's better to kind of hit these switches if you can. The problem is this is a bit of a mess, it's very tedious. So with those three things, put one in, put two in. It clears the path, but if you put three in, you get the Artemis. You got another demon world that discharges arrows concentrated with demon. Well, demon energy, I was gonna say. Demonic energy, but... Same fucking thing. I, I'll be honest, I never use it. Um, I don't use anything but the pistols, usually. Uh, so this one's orange, which means... Agony and red. Kind of keeping your combos going with Agni and Rudra is a little hard because uh, they they have a pretty good variety, but it's a little when the only button you're pressing is triangle, it's a little weird. And there's a bunch of red orbs up here, but platforming with this camera is very fucking awkward. I've said it before, but like a lot of, despite a lot of my problems with DMC, uh, this game, like that game, did handle platforming right. Well, well, you've grown stronger. Go to hell. You point a gun at me. Your own kin, your dear papa. The only family I ever had was my mother. And she's dead! You break my heart. After all, it was I who gave you your name. My darling daughter. <laughs> I'm getting hit a lot in this playthrough. <laughs> well, this is my kind of rain. No wonder the sky looks so funny today. Let me go! Let you go? <laughs> but it would be a waste if you ended up as just a pretty stain. What the hell was that for? 
Here I am trying to help you, and you show your thanks by shooting me? <sighs> Whatever. Do as you please. He's a demon, too. I'm beginning to think I've got rotten luck with women. Alright, this will probably be the last uh, mission for, for me today. Um, but it is a cool one. So, it's a good one to go out on. I love that lady just fucking shot Dante without knowing that he was a demon first. Um, this is another secret mission. I don't remember. What are we even at? I don't think we have any shards at all. And if we don't, I, I don't know if it's worth it. Fuck it. We'll see what it is. Stay in there for 20 seconds. Um, yeah, this is the one that's kind of rough. You kind of need the crowd to reset to do this one. Um, having rare hike helps, but what you really need to kind of do is get them all clumped in the corner. And jump off of them. Because that'll reset your air hike. Oh, fuck that. Are you kidding me? God damn it. Fucking goddamn. This is really frustrating. What doesn't do you any favors is if you upgraded your guns, you're doing more damage, so you're not. Come on, get in the fucking corner, guys. Oh, they're pissing me off. Like, they keep jumping out of the corner and just staring at me. Yeah, this is gonna work. They don't, they don't all come together right now. Over me. Come on, dude. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah, this is the shit I was worried about. It's I just don't have the patience for it right now. Come fucking do. Like just let me fail. God, dude, like, how is, like, none of them underneath me?
God damn it. I might actually be the player to just hop off with one of them and do it forever. Die, you fuck. If you get him into a corner, anything is possible. Like, it's not really generous about when you'll jump off an enemy. So it's like, it'll feel like, oh, that should have counted. No, come on, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, why did they all jump? Fucking piece of shit. I hate this mission so much, and there's always one of them in every fucking Devil May Cry game. Stay in the air forever. It's like, well, have the enemies not be fucking dumb. What are they doing, man? And they even fucking hit me there. God, what are they doing? What the fuck are they jumping for? Only to fuck me up. Come on, assholes. Just fucking stay put. What is this? This is the fucking worst. Like. Crowd up, but they don't do it in the fucking corner. Alright, dude. What the fuck is with them? Like, it's so, like, luck-based, like, what their AI is going to do. Fuck this. I don't want to do that at all. Luckily, it's right at the beginning of that mission. God, I fucking hate that. It's just so frustrating. Like, when they... So they'll just jump like spazzes. Like, there's no reliable way to stay in the air with them. Let's go fuck up our brother.
suppose one thing I could have done in that challenge is uh, I wasn't doing my air slash combo thing. That'll keep you in the air just a little bit longer. It's just so fucking tedious. Like, uh, I'll be honest, I, I I love the Devil May Cry series, but I don't really like how they've done super missions ever. Like, I just don't find them that fun. Like, I come to Devil May Cry for the basics of it. It's, I just want to get my combo up, I want to do cool shit, and win the game. So these guys will summon shit later and then kind of want to kill them quick. And they have a lot of health, so... God damn it. I'm really sure that wouldn't hit me. God damn it. So one of the things you have to be careful with with Stainer, something I'm really bad about it is like... If you want to just do the rammy charge, just do that. Like, you gotta make sure you're not hammering the attack button afterwards. Um, because he will go into that, like, rapid stab attack afterwards if you're not careful. Alright, this one is pretty intense. So, let's see if we can do it. Always feels good to pull that, pull one of those off. But yeah, like Dante will go into that rapid stab attack, and you're kind of trapped in it until you stop hitting the attack button. Like he won't jump out of it when you need him to. I remember this part confusing me a lot because you get a you get that item. It's the sh uh, siren shriek, and you use it over here on the giant thing of fire. Which just doesn't seem to make a lot of goddamn sense to me. But maybe I'm maybe I'm the dumb one. Certainly likely. Man, fuck you. You 
you guys are bastards. Here I am trying to show off a fun video game, and you keep fucking hitting me. Things is really weird. So this part gives me a lot of trouble. Like this thing's on a timer, and yeah, you're supposed to hit it a bunch. It's easier to hit it when you're riding on it, but it's also still really finicky. Like, it'll knock Dante off, and its health will, like, reset. And I, I thought the first time I played it, like, you're supposed to hit it up against a wall, but... But if you hop on it and lock on, it should do that. And then... Kill this thing. Fuck you, dude. Damn, what the fuck? Like, that rapid setup is really weird. Like, it's really good to, like, get that combo meter up, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. And, like, it kind of freezes you for a little bit, so it's weird. This game is being pretty generous with me right now with, with green orbs, so the fact that I'm taking a lot of hits right now isn't the worst thing in the world. So we got the skull we came for, then I'll open the door back at the earlier hallway. Now I'll go to first of one of the great many duels in this game.
so. I'm gonna just get Rebellion all put away with. And... So that ability we just got. Uh, wait, how, how the fuck do you do it? Hang on, I need to remember my moves here. Yeah, it's just hold down Y. Alright. Uh, I thought there was a direction to it. That was, well, let you charge it up, and then don't say it. Fucking drop people with it. It's a pretty cool attack, but it takes a lot of time, and you gotta be selective about it. Time to shut up. More fun than he was in Devil May Cry 1. Not exactly hard yet, but. I like how mid fight his hair like falls down from the rain and stuff and like that's not just a cutscene thing. I like dumb and things like that. I don't have a father. 
I just don't like you. That's all. We have all that we need. That Dante just needed to get fucked up a bit. And now he can turn into a monster. So yeah, that'll be it for me today. Uh, we'll probably be back with this tomorrow. Um, when we come back, right off the bat, the best fucking cutscene in maybe any game ever will be next. So... Look forward to that. I'll see you all then. Have a great time. Doing whatever you do.